Computers send and receive data all around the world, but just how does that work? Let's dive in. Let's start with two computers, computer A and computer B cabled together with an ethernet cable. The ethernet cable itself is just a long run of wires. It connects to the computer with a network interface controller, most commonly referred to as a NIC. Most computers come with a built-in NIC, but you can add in an extra if you have available PCI lanes. NICs come with a completely unique ID called a MAC address. And the MAC address is similar to a shipping address, but for your NIC. Usually, you only have one MAC address in use by the computer, but if you have multiple network interfaces like Wi-Fi and Ethernet, a second MAC address could be in use. The NIC itself is able to make and receive signals across the Ethernet cable. Keep in mind, this is just a cable we're sending down electricity in a specific way. Sending electricity down a line for some amount of time could indicate a 1, while the absence of electricity could indicate a 0. Here's an example. Computer A sends 8 1s or zeros, indicating a letter of the alphabet. Computer B responds back with a message if the letter was received correctly, or responds with a different message if the letter needs repeated due to an error. What we have defined here is a super basic protocol. In reality, your NIC receives something called frames, but in a similar light, it has its own protocol defining the meaning and order of the ones and zeros. We won't dig in this too much today, but your NIC card sends small chunks of data over a frame. Similar to a shipping label, the frame has a destination MAC and a source MAC. When a frame is received by your NIC, it checks to see if the destination MAC matches your unique ID. If it does, the data is processed by your computer. To the user, this processed data could look like a web browser loading a bit or a download continuing. However, these processes could take thousands of frames to complete. Using Macs to address computers works perfectly well if all the computers are directly attached. But the internet is made up of a bunch of smaller networks that can all talk to one another. Computer applications also don't use MAC addresses to directly transfer data between each other. Instead, IP addresses are used. When a NIC card receives a frame, the data inside usually contains something called a packet. Similar to the frame protocol, the IP protocol defines the order and meaning of the raw ones and zeros coming across the ethernet. These packets contain a source and a destination IP, as well as a data payload. Normally, each computer has one IP address, but each NIC attached to a DHCP server will be assigned an IP. This is done by the router in most home networks. If computer A wants to talk to computer B, but computer A only knows the IP address of computer B, computer A can use ARP, Address Resolution Protocol, to resolve the destination MAC. This is where a frame is sent to all computers on the network. The computer with the matching MAC replies back while all other computers ignore the request. Most home networks use an IP range of 192.168.1 something and have a subnet mask of 255.255.255.0, which is often referred to as a slash 24 network. Let's look at one of these IPs. In this example, all IPs in your network will start with 192.168.1 something. Dot 11 is unique to this computer on this network. Slash 24 is the subnet mask. The subnet mask more or less defines which part of the IP is common to your network and which part changes per computer. In this example, all IPs starting with 192.168.1 are part of your network. Any IP outside that range needs your router to forward your packet to the proper router. If your routing table is set up correctly, then the next hop or router should be able to resolve the IP into a local MAC address, or at least be able to forward it on to a router that can. There could be any number of these network hops in between you and just about anywhere on the internet. Of course, we don't type in IP addresses to our favorite websites, even though we can. Instead, we rely on DNS servers. If you send a DNS server a domain name, it will reply back with the IP address tied to the domain name. This lets anyone set up a web server, then pay for a domain name. Next, they can point that domain name at that IP address. People that browse to the site will end up talking to a DNS server to find your IP. Then your data will be hopped across various routers to its end destination. At this point, computers can route data to various networks using the IP protocol. The data in the IP packet usually contains something like TCP, which is short for Transmission Control Protocol. These protocols often have error correction built in. These TCP packets are the basis of how a lot of fundamental applications work including HTTP and HTTPS, which is how web pages send and receive data. Head on over to hackers-game.com to find out more. Thanks for watching. Bye.